Hi, Paula here with eXp Realty. In this short, I'm going to talk about five ways that you can maximize revenues and decrease the vacancy of your vacation rental property. So this will specifically be for vacation rental properties that are less than 30 nights, typically weekly rentals. So tip number one will be start big and go small, meaning start with longer rental periods like five night minimum, seven night minimum, two week minimum. And then when you get closer to the dates of arrival, you can shrink those. Otherwise, what will happen is you're going to have all these little rentals that are getting in the way of bigger rentals. So if you're booking right now, right now we're in August, if you're booking for Christmas bookings, make sure you're setting them at the longest um, time frame that your market there will book for. So if you're in a ski resort, you might want to set your minimum to two weeks or one week. And then once those bigger bookings are done, then you fill in those gaps with shorter stays. Otherwise, if you do it the opposite way and you start right away with shorter stay minimums, like one or two or three nights, you're going to have all these um, vacancies in between that you just can't fill. And they're going to be in the way of longer term bookings, which actually are so much easier to manage. Tip number two is pricing. Airbnb does have a special feature where they'll fluctuate the pricing based on what the demand is. However, in my experience, I found that their prices still remain lower than what I would have received if I put in my own pricing and did my own research to find out what pricing is existing during that time period. For example, I have a property that during Christmas time in a ski resort rents for about seven to eight hundred dollars a night. When I put it on the Airbnb fluctuation, I was getting less than five hundred. So just be really careful and make sure you you manage that well. Uh, a good place to start for figuring out how much your property may cost is a website called AirDNA, and they've got excellent market data. It's a paid service. There is a little bit of a free service as well, but you're going to want to pay for it for your specific region. And there you're going to find out exactly what places are renting for and what the occupancy rates are. Another tip around pricing, this will be tip number three, is set your pricing um, depending on how long someone is staying. So if someone's staying for a week, they're probably going to have a 10 to 20% discount. Your highest dollars are going to come from your nightly rentals, meaning one or two nights. However, those require a ton of work. That's a lot of bookings, a lot of turnover, a lot of um, troubleshooting for internet, where to put the garbage, I don't know where the keys are, all that sort of thing, which typically takes place the first and second day that a guest arrives. So if you don't have the time to be super, super hands-on or you don't live on the property, I'd suggest sticking to five nights, seven nights. It'll make your life so much easier and your guests will be so much happier for it. Following on that previous tip, Start with those longer term stays because you're going to have happier clients. In general, I find that the first and second days are a real adjustment period where the keys, they feel a little bit lost, it's sort of fish out of water and you're going to be troubleshooting a lot. It's going to be way more work to do those shorter term bookings. So unless you're living in the property or you can get there quite easily or have a fantastic property manager on site, kind of avoid those one, two or three night stays if you can. When guests stay five nights or longer, the ratings go up so much more because they finish that adjustment period. Imagine if you arrive to a place and you can't get the internet working for the first 24 hours. If you're there for two days, half of your stay, the internet was down. Versus if you're there for a week, it was just a little bleep and you don't even remember it by the third or fourth day. You're just enjoying your vacation. So keep your guests happy and keep your workload a little bit lighter by starting with longer term stays. Now, once you've got those longer term stays in place, then you can bring in those shorter stays to fill in the gaps. Try to encourage your guests to turn your vacation property into their annual tradition. So let them come back and then follow up with them throughout the year, build that relationship, offer them something special for their commitment to come back year after year and build those family memories. Have a great day.